The perfect printer doesn't exist. Or does it? What if it had a large build volume, was fully enclosed, running Clipper firmware with independent dual extruders? Well, the Vividino Marathon meets those criteria. This is a brand new printer from the team behind the Trudon 2.0, a Voron 2.4 derivative that I've covered extensively on this channel in the past. I don't yet have my hands on the Marathon, but what I do have is an exclusive interview with its designer, Dr. Dan Marinescu. This video is going to be a little bit different than anything I've done before, but trust me when I tell you this is going to be highly valuable. We'll take a closer look at the Marathon 3D printer, analyzing it in detail. Along the way, we're going to get a unique perspective into the mind of a 3D printer designer. We'll learn what considerations they make and how those affect both cost and performance. If you think the spec sheet looks good, just wait. It's even better than it seems. This printer has received little fanfare so far, but I honestly think the underdog might come out on top. So without further ado, let's roll the thing. You are interested on this Marathon 3D printer? Very interested. Perfectly. So I'm Dan, I'm a mechanical engineer and I work in the automotive industry. And basically 3D printing is a hobby that started for me in 2015 or something. I bought myself a CTC 3D printer. It was a very bad copy of a MakerBot. It was uh, such a printer made of uh, wood panels and very bad quality, but I bought something like this. The aim was to see what can be done with, with, with something like this. And I was in love with, with, with this thing. Uh, it's, it's like a micro, uh, this 3D printing uh, thing. And uh, since then I started to build my own because I said, okay, with this printer I cannot do too much. And... Um, I started building building my my own. My wish was to do something better, something bigger. Uh, I had a lot of ideas. I built some concepts, and uh, one of them uh, was an IDX uh, 3D printer. The um, concept looked very very similar with what uh, Marathon today uh, looks like. And with this concept, uh, I started to contact different manufacturers, 3D printing manufacturers. First, with emails, uh, simply asking, uh, hi guys, I have seen your uh, 3D printing portfolio. Are you interested to add uh, something there? The majority of them uh, never answered or um, the answer was negative. And then I contacted Formbond Vivedino. They were uh, very, very friendly, very interested. They said, yes, we want to do more. We have uh, also some ideas. We are very open for the collaboration. I showed them uh, this uh, marathon and uh, they were very, very impressed. And so we started to make uh, different uh, adaptation that are better suited for, for industrialization. We came to the point where the project was good enough to do some prototypes. One uh, was sent to me also. It is running in this moment as we speak. I don't know how many hours it has, uh, 1,500 hours uh, uh, for printing. I've made, I think, uh, almost 100 changes and optimization. So between this prototype that I have, and the pre-sale version. What is different by this printer? The um, printing heads for the X movement, the motor incorporated, the small NEMA motor, NEMA 14. We've managed to have motion system that is actually very simple, uh, short belt, not too many polys, not too many components, advantages uh, regarding the price and the reliability. My wish was also to, to, to build a printer that is uh, very stable, very stiff, that can be used thousands of hours without problems. From here comes the name Marathon. Uh, in the same time, the, pr the printer remains somehow an open project because the huge majority of the components are basically standard 3D print printer components, beginning with the extruders. There are Orbiter uh, version 2 extruders uh, with the sensor from the Orbiter. They are very, very potent extruders, standard Hotens, all the motors are standard. Electronics is standard, it's from uh, Big T3H. It's a uh, Manta M8P board with um, a CM, CB Ions module for, for Clipper. Guiding system is MGN 12. 
everything you see there mechanical and uh, electronic are are standard components so it's easy to purchase them if something will ever break and it also is, is a clipper firmware so it's not a manufacturer specific uh, firmware as clipper for experienced users with a lot of imagination they can do whatever they want with, with these, these printers. So I've tried to make something very stiff, very reliable, but that it also remains open uh, for uh, new ideas or from the 3D printing uh, community. And uh, also something that is not very pricey, that also offers a good speed, multi-material printing, so not multicolor, multi-material, it's a difference. So that was my aim. Big printing volume, so this thing has 330 to 300 to 290 millimeters print volume so it's it's big it's generous the print bed is, is made of eight millimeter thick aluminum so it's really a stiff block of aluminum you'll see when you receive your unit you'll see all all these de uh, de details and um, i hope you will like it i like it but i'm subjective <laughs> it's my baby that's amazing wow um, yeah, you did a fantastic job there of answering, you know, almost any question I think most people would have. Um, and it sounds like you've, you've put a lot of work into this. I wanted to build something that I like, that I've missed in other uh, projects that I've seen. My belief is uh, that also other hobbies in 3D printing like me want these things in their machines. And uh, that's why I've give my best together with, uh, with Formboard team. They are a great team, very involved, very active. I hope to deliver a, a good result with this marathon. That sounds really amazing. And it, it really seems to me like you're filling a gap in the market. You know, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing quite like this in terms of IDAX, Clipper, pre-assembled in, in this case. You may have seen that the Voron team is coming forth with their Phoenix printer, yes. um, which is very, very large but it's the first IDEX version of a Voron printer. So I think it's really great to see that we have so many options. And I think this one in particular is a really great option for all of the reasons that you listed. I think if you compare it to other off-the-shelf printers from uh, other manufacturers, the only one I can really think of that is even remotely similar would be the Snapmaker J1. Uh, a little bit more closed source, obviously. It's not quite the same kind of grassroots initiative like you've put forth here, where it sounds like an open source project. Could somebody theoretically self-source the components for this or are there some things that um, would be difficult to source themselves there are some specific components that are made for this printer in the printing heads uh, there is a, a small uh, electronical um, board is, is made by uh, Formboard. where we publish slicer profiles for uh, sprusa slicer and uh, also stl files from uh, the plastic parts will be also published. If somebody wants to make all the black parts in pink, <laughs> yes, why Why not? The assembly is uh, relatively simple. So it that thing comes in pre-assembled modules, upper part, the base and uh, the pillars. You won't need longer than one hour of work using just basic tools and basic knowledges so you don't have to be a wonder of a mechanical engineer to put this together and the operation you you will have to do some calibration at first bed probe uh, calibration uh, the um, offset between the two nozzles you mentioned tool offsets yes that's obviously a pretty important step in calibrating an idx printer how are you handling the tool offset calibration how can i say very traditional handled for z offset there are crews at the nozzle you, you just have to loosen them and uh, both the nozzle are then in contact with the bed and you have both at the same level this is important for mirroring and copy mode and edx when when you mirror and copy you cannot use the software offset they have to be mechanical after at the same level and x and y I have here a macro, you hit it and we'll start printing calibration model. After you've seen it, how it looks like, then you write here the offset, click send, and that's all. Okay, so two more kind of questions on the hardware. It's fully enclosed and it's got kind of a, a top hat design, right? So you can get easy access to, to yes. the top frame. I work with uh, Fusion 360. As you can see on the side and front, there are uh, transparent 
panels and the hood hinge on the, at the back and you can open and look inside. In terms of the, um, the Z-axis motion, there's three lead screws. Are they coupled or they're, they're no, independent? No, uh, they're independent. You have three different motors, so you can tilt the, the bed. I really like that feature on uh, my Rat Rig V-Core 3. Just the ability to do that kinematic bed leveling, make sure your bed yes. is perfectly parallel to the gantry, right? The bed leveling, the mesh, it is not done at the beginning of each print. You do it separately, it's memorized, and you have it there. But uh, the bed tilting is done at the beginning of each print because it only takes maybe one minute and that's all. And the bed itself, that is a CNC 8 millimeter plate, which is relatively good machined because without a, a good precision, you won't have been able to do mirroring or copy because by doing mirror or copy, the second extruder just copies or mirror. The bed leveling is applied to the, the first extruder. So if you have a Bad quality bed, you won't be able to do that. The heating is uh, at 220 volts in Europe. In USA, will be 110. In terms of thermal expansion, I know on the uh, the V core they have some fixtures that allow for thermal expansion of the bed plate. Do you have anything like that incorporated into the design? Fixation point is spherical bearing. Each uh, screw has. Uh, anti-wobbling system. One of the main reasons, there are all screw. They last forever. They are very precise, but the common ones that are used for 3D printing are not perfectly straight. If you want perfectly straight ball screws, then yes, they exist, but they cost maybe 300 euros a piece. The deviation is more or less 100 microns or something, but it's enough to produce artifacts on uh, some type of parts like uh, vase, shiny materials and so on. And the 3D printing community like to have good looking parts. That's why we've decided to put the system. And also uh, if when we are speaking about uh, Z-axis, the bed, as I said, is, is a heavy bed. The load will be not taken by the bearings of the motor. Here uh, is a pillow where it stays a, a flat bearing. The motors are moons, really good quality but it's really not recommended to put such a big load on those motors. They will handle it maybe for a few thousand hours, but at some point they will break. And this is a, a marathon, not a sprint. Y yes, of course. Yes, of course. So uh, all, all to these solutions that I've shown you, maybe some of them can look a little bit over-engineered, but are because of what I wanted from this project, a printer that can work many thousands of, of hours without any mechanical defects. It looks like you've done a, a phenomenal job here. I'm curious about the, the hot ends. It looked like you had a parking location just to prevent ooze out of the nozzle. If we're speaking about the nozzles, before starting each print, the hot end will heat up and uh, brush his teeth, so to, so to say. And between tool changes, uh, there is here a park position, so to say, with a small uh, metal plate that uh, covers the nozzle so that you don't get here uh, filament drops. Regarding the hot end, is a variation of V6 hot end. This, those are the screw that I, I told you regarding the set offset. I'll show you on AliExpress uh, what uh, are for the hot ends. This heating is this cylindrical heating element. Distribution of the heat is better made. The, also, the overall volume, uh, this uh, heating element is a little bit uh, smaller. The nozzle is still hardened nozzle, so you can use without any changes also uh, abrasive materials. I see behind the, the hot end there, that stepper motor that's driving the x-axis, correct? Yes, exactly. So um, there is a motor here below. It is fixated on a um, CNC aluminum part. So uh, in terms of heat dissipation, uh, it has a very good position. Also, the um, residual airflow from the um, hot and cooling hits this motor directly. This motor have a, a very, very uh, pleasant place, so to say. The motors are also from moons. They are capable of one ampere current. I use them only with 0 0.65. If one uh, wants to, to push them 
a little bit harder. 0.8 is also very possible without uh, problems. In terms of thermal dissipation and ventilation, they are in a very favorable position. One of the other things that Clipper firmware is obviously very well known for is input shaping. Is input shaping even supported with two tool heads in Clipper firmware? Also, input shaping is deactivated for this printer. I have measured the vibrations and put the values inside. And basically what happens when you print with the T0, the printer will load the values for T0. T0 is a little bit different from T1 because it has the bed probing. So in terms of weight, there are some differences. When you print with T1, it will load the values from input shape form for T1. When you print with both in mirror, there are specific values that were measured in mirror mode, the same in copy mode. So for each printing scenario, this printer will use specific values for the input shaping. Wow, that's that's quite sophisticated. Yes, there is, maybe this will be your next question. There is no accelerometer inside, so you cannot measure uh, values by yourself. As I said, you have a big mm-hmm. three text board you want to buy an accelerometer and fixate it here then you can of course make your own measurements okay so is there a tool head breakout board for the connectors or do they go all the way back to the main board you have to have it because when you receive the printer these wires that come here they are nicely packed here after you put everything together you have to thread them like this fixate it with a, a few cable ties And then uh, here in the back, uh, you will have a connector. And you mentioned the tool zero is the one with the probe. Is it a uh, inductive probe or a mechanical probe? Uh, It's a super pinda probe. Okay, so inductive. Uh, Yes, the weight of this probe is only a few grams. And the most interesting thing, it has automatic thermal compensation. So it doesn't matter how hot will be your bed, the measurements won't be affected. A normal inductive probe will have different readings at different bed temperatures. Thank you so much, Dan, for running through this with us. Well, there you have it. The Marathon 3D printer. Designed by Dr. Dan Marinescu, and manufactured by Formbot, aka Vividino. It's clear that they've thought of every detail and left no stone unturned. But will that translate to a good printer? We'll find out soon. Stay tuned for the unboxing video, followed by a review, and perhaps a whole series of videos on this Marathon 3D printer. If it is as interesting as it seems, maybe I'll dive into it in detail, like I did with the Trudon 2.0. At any rate, make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss those videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you to Dr. Dan Marinescu for taking his time and sharing his knowledge and passion. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.